All right, good day, yogis. This is Stephen Chang coming to you live from Simha Yoga Lab in Jersey City, New Jersey. Please visit my website, simhayoga.com, for the full streaming schedule, as well as payment information for Venmo and for PayPal. My preferred way of payment is through uh, Venmo, and my handle through Venmo is Simha Yoga Lab. And my four-digit ID code is 8096 if you're prompted for it. Classes are $10, and if it's uh, difficult, if it's a difficult time for you right now, $5 is fine. We can definitely work with that. Please share with your friends and let people know classes are happening. Um, if you see anything on social media, um, Instagram and Facebook, please repost and share and let people know. Um, I am streaming live through Instagram and Facebook and there's a new thing happening with Instagram where it's no longer saved under stories, now they're just making it um, IGTV, so it's posted under all my regular postings anyway. So um, you can always access it there. Um, it seems like it's a permanent um, uh, archiving now, so uh, on, face on Instagram. Also on Facebook, um, I am keeping it there for about a week or two. Um, we'll see what happens with Instagram if I'm going to save it there. But uh, the best bet is through YouTube. My YouTube channel is Simha Yoga Lab. The um, audio, video, and overall quality off of YouTube is far superior because it is being recorded versus live stream and then downloaded as a recording. So there are some um, video and audio quality issues with Instagram and Facebook, but you know, they're uh, instantaneous, so that's the benefit of that. Through my YouTube though, I have to upload it, so it does take a few hours between the time I stream and the time that they're uploaded. However, if you're not working off of my schedule on streaming and you're just kind of uh, finding the classes whenever at your convenience, then it doesn't matter. The quality is way better on YouTube, so I encourage you if um, you are okay to wait, look me up on YouTube. I think it's a little bit better. All right, um, for those of you who are new to practice, um, please make sure that you're always checking in to see if any if you're going out of your range, right? If I'm teaching something and you're really new to practice, you're a beginner, and it's not quite appropriate for you to take something so deep, then pull back a little bit. I always start with the basics and then I start to add on uh, variations and make it a little bit more complex. So if it's too much for you, pull back to the basics and stay there until we move on to the next thing. Um, in contrast, those of you who are a little bit more experienced, and I'm not calling for a variation that you prefer, by all means take it. So anytime we're holding a pose and we're slowing things down, you can always add on, choose things that are appropriate, and leave other things out that aren't. Okay, so um, today's class is open flow, it is a level one, level two. For those of you who like to elevate, if you have tight hips or tight lower back, that makes it a lot more accessible for you to sit up tall. You can also sit up on a towel or a blanket. Um, if you happen to have props at home, blocks, blankets, towels, um, maybe even books and water bottles, right? They can be helpful for you to enhance your practice. So have them near you. I usually put them near the front in this way so that they don't get in my way and it's easily accessible. Okay, sitting up tall, palms face up. Fingers come to down mudra, thumb and index fingers touching, letting the other fingers just release and extend. With the eyes closed and the lips gently touching, start to regulate the breath by breathing only through your nose. Through the breath, let the mind start to quiet. Letting the inhales even out with your exhale so that the oppositional energies become equalized. Your masculine, feminine, light and dark, positive, negative. Three arms together, inhale.
keeping the eyes closed, hands together in prayer of front of the heart, pressing the thumbs into your heart, heart back into the thumbs, lifting the heart toward the sky, setting your intention for yoga practice, devoting your practice to someone or something or to yourself, your supreme self that lives within your heart, chanting the mantra for purification, purifying the space in which you practice yoga, call and response. Om Pavitra Ha, Om Pavitra Ha, Pavitra Wa, Pavitra Wa, Samwa Vashta, Samwa Vashta, Gato Piwa, Gato Piwa, Yaha Smarit, Yaha Smarit, Pundri Kaksham, Pundri Kaksham, Sapakya, Sapakya, Pihyandraha, Pihyandraha, Suchihi, Suchihi. Beginning to open the eyes and let the palms face up. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, right ear to the right shoulder, right hand to the left side. Elongate through the left side of the neck. And then draw the chin toward the right shoulder. Release back to center, drop the right hand, left ear to the left shoulder, left hand to the right side. And then the chin toward the left shoulder. Release back to center, drop the left hand, chin toward the chest, big circles with the head in one direction, ear to one side, roll the back, opposite side, roll the center. Take a few more rounds at your own pace. Take back center and pause, opposite direction. And then back to center again. Lifting the chin parallel to the floor and into your spine. Coming off your blocks, extend the legs forward, separating your feet. Hands are to either side of you for support as you flex through your feet, turning your toes toward each other. And then roll up, draw in, roll out, draw in. Outward rotation, circling the ankles. Back to center, switch them around. And take back to center again. Cross your shins, opposite shin on top. Raise the arms up high to extend. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, back center. Exhale, twist to your left. Back to center again. Side bends, right hand down, left arm overhead. Take back to center. Exhale, other side. Back to center again, legs forward, forward fold. Back up. Stick the soles of feet together, knees apart. Grabbing the ankles, uh, press your feet toward each other. And then take some butterflies. All right, let's come back to stillness. Bhattakonasana, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, take it forward to the forward fold. If you want to press your elbows to your inner thighs, giving you additional support, but also opening up the hips a little bit with a little bit of pressure. Begin to release. Take the left hand to the floor, gently press your right thigh away giving you even more openness to your inner thighs, your hip joint and groins. Take back center, switch sides, pressing to the inner thighs. Take it back up, keep the left heel in, draw the right heel back, creating the letter S. 
Left hand to support, raise your right arm, right elbow is uh, bent and your fingers are soft. On the inhale, draw the right elbow back. Exhale, twist to your left. Inhale, draw the right elbow back. Exhale, twist. Three more times. This time, draw back a little bit more, beginning to progressively um, get deeper. Twist your left. Inhale, draw your right arm back. Exhale, twist left. One more time. Draw the right elbow back. Twist left and stay here, twisting. Then extend the right arm out. Reach, twist deeper. Then take the right hand down to the floor for support. Adjust your left hand. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist and bow forward about halfway. Stopping at the halfway point. Inhale again. Exhale, twist deeper. Bow forward even more. You're looking past your left hand behind you for the sole of the right foot. Inhale, take it back to center. Keep the legs, exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, back to center. Pick up the right knee, draw the right heel forward. Support the right heel from the underside of your foot and flex your right foot, sitting up top. Inhale, raise your right heel higher. Exhale, draw the right heel down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. One more time. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. This time, inhale, lift about halfway. You don't have to go super high. Draw the right knee back. Draw the right heel forward. Draw the right knee back. Draw the right heel forward. One more. Draw the right heel back. Draw forward. Lift up. Lengthen. And then extend the right heel out. Now press your right heel outwards, but pull with your hands back. So there's a lot of tension into that right leg. And then with that tension, keep it and draw the right knee further back. And release. You have two choices. Cross-legged position or if your right hip is ready, you can take a half lotus, which is the top of the right foot to your left hip crease. If this is too stressful for your right knee and the right ankle, come back to your cross-legged position. You're taking a forward fold. Inhale, reach your arms up high, lengthen. Exhale, start to take it forward, and then take the hands down. Once you have your hands down, inhale, re lengthen. Keep that lengthen as the best you can. On the exhale, make your way forward. Inhale again, lengthen. Exhale, go a little bit deeper. Working the next three to five breaths at your own pace getting deeper and deeper into the forward fold. So you're looking for extension of your arms, your shoulders, and the upper back, as well as your lower back as you ground through the seat down and draw forward. You're also getting that lower back stretch. Now, if you want to relax your neck and draw the chin toward the chest a little bit and let the forehead get heavy, you can do that too. Keep tractioning your fingertips to the floor and extend forward. All right, start to walk it back in. Support your right leg, extend forward. Support the left leg, extend forward. Hands to either side, flex your feet. Point your toes, let's do that three times. Flex, point, flex, point. Come back to neutral, soles your feet together. This time, your feet a little bit further forward, so you're creating a diamond shape. You can grab your insides of the feet, or if you have a little more flexibility, thread your arms underneath your legs. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, round, draw forward. So in this forward fold, you don't have to lengthen that much. You can actually round the back and then soften the back of the neck. So it's a very gentle forward fold. And start to release. And again, let's start with the right, uh, left side. Press your right hand down. Gently press your left thigh away for opening of the hips. Back to center, other side. Back to center. Draw the right heel in, left heel back. 
right? So this time you have a reverse letter X with your legs. Right hand for support, lift the left arm to about parallel the floor, left elbows um, bent, fingers are soft. Inhale, draw the left elbow back, exhale, twist to the right, we'll take five of them. Inhale, draw the left elbow back, exhale, twist to the right. This time, inhale, take it back a little bit deeper, exhale, twist a little bit more. Inhale, draw the left elbow back deeper, exhale, twist a little bit more. One more time, inhale back, exhale, twist and stay here, twisting. Keep resisting with your right hand pressing down so that you can twist a little bit deeper. Now extend your left finger, left arm, and reach your left fingertips and then twist. Then the left hand comes back to the floor. Adjust your right hand if you need. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist a little bit deeper as you bow forward about halfway. Inhale again here. Exhale, go deeper in the forward fold and the twist. You're looking past the right hand behind you for the sole of the left foot. Inhale, take it back to center. Exhale, counter twist to your left. Back to center again. Lift the left knee, draw the left heel forward. And support the left heel from the underside. Okay? So you're flexing your left foot to protect the ankle joint and the knee joint of the left leg. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Lift up about halfway. It doesn't have to be to your highest. Reach forward. Draw the left knee back. Reach forward. Draw the left knee back. Reach forward. Draw the left knee back. Reach forward again. Now with your hands, press your left heel foot. Ah, actually, I think we lift it higher first. Just stay there, lift higher. Now press your left heel forward with your legs, but pull the foot back with your hands. So it's a very nice, strong um, position here. And then draw the left knee further back. So you're going to the hip opening. Release, take a cross leg position. So if your um, left knee and ankles are rather tight and um, it doesn't feel good at all to take a half lotus, take a cross leg, it's much easier. If you're ready to take a half lotus, top of the foot to your right hip crease. Right, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, start to take it forward, let the hands come down for support. Once you have your hands down, re-lengthen on the inhale. Exhale, take it a little bit deeper forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, take it even further. Take the next three to five breaths at your own pace and progressively get a little bit longer through your arms and shoulders and a little bit more openness through your lower back. You can relax your neck and just let the forehead get heavy. But keep tractioning your fingertips forward and grounding back through the seat. Begin to walk it back in. Support the left leg. Extend it forward, support the right leg, extend it forward. Hands to either side and flex your feet by pulling your toes back and then point. Flex, point, flex, point. So that's a very effective way for you to neutralize your knees and your ankles, right? Especially if you take half lotuses, full lotuses, ankles to knee. Um, there's a lot of stress that goes into the knees and the ankles, right? However, um, that stress, right? Make sure it's not too deep or too much of a stress. You want a little bit of work, so that work into the knees and the ankles is there to help for, um, for flexibility and for strengthening, right? But at the same time, they are kind of stressful, so you gotta make sure when you come out of it, you take the time to neutralize, right? So that you can now move a little bit more freely. All right, swing the legs back for down dog. Pedaling out the legs. 
All right, so let's measure. Hands on our shoulders width, fingers wide spread, your index fingers or your middle fingers point straight forward. Uh, ground through your fingertips, finger knuckles and the pads of the hands, but be light on your wrists. Feet are separated about hip width. Heels are reaching down, hips are reaching up, so your heels are actually not touching down, but they're always reaching down, so you're getting that lengthy back of the legs and support through the feet. Inhale, take it forward into your pipe. On the exhale, lower all the way down to the belly. Take the hands a little bit wider, they're off your mat, and a little bit further forward. Come to your fingertips, then lift the elbows up to um, open up the armpits, engage upper back by squeezing the shoulder blades for each other, and then on the inhale, lift up baby cobra. Your belly and your ribs are on the floor, so your upper back is highly engaged, and the elbow reaching up also gives you openness to the underside of the arms and the armpits. Press your fingertips into the floor, lift up a little higher, lift up, draw the shoulders back. And then lift up, draw the shoulders back, lift up even higher. And so you can always keep your elbows bent if you don't have the full extension, but if you're flexible enough to take the full extension, you can. And start to break, lower all the way down, walk your hands in, child's pose. Walk your hands over to the left side, ground the left forearm, extend through the right arm out. So again, you're looking for the lifting of the underside of the arm so you can create space to the armpits and into your right shoulder. Now, if you want more intensity, right, as you lift the arm and crawl the right fingertips forward, you can lean into the right shoulder and that will give you a much deeper stretch, right? So it's not a big giant movement, the slightest movement will give you a nice um, stretch there. Alright, start to release, take it back to center, switch sides, uh, walk over to the right side, right forearm comes down, extend your left fingertips forward. So you want to lift the underside of the left arm away from the floor, keep crawling the left fingertips out to traction and stretch your left side. And then you want more intensity, lean into your left shoulder. Walk your hands back in, lift up to a kneeling position. Interlace your fingers, press your palms forward and round the spine, chin towards the chest. Inhale, lift, wrap the hands back behind you. Interlace, broaden your shoulders, reach your knuckles back, lift the gaze upwards toward the sky, lift your sternum and your heart center. Come to neutral spine, release. Take the other interlacing of your hands, Press forward, round the spine. Inhale, come up, wrap the hands back behind you. Also, find the non-dominant interlacing of your hands. Broaden your shoulders, reach your knuckles back, lift the sternum up, gaze upwards. Come to neutral, release. Walk your hands forward, down dog. Inhale, raise your right heel up, free like a dog. Exhale, draw the right knee toward the nose, round the spine, shoulders over your wrists, high on your back tiptoes, knee in toward the nose, doming of the mid back up toward the sky for another three, two, and one. Kick it up, open up the hips, bend the right knee, stack the hips, right knee is reaching up, left heel is reaching down, press firmly through your hands for the extension. Right knee to the outside of the right arm, one like a crow, holding it here. Three, two, one. Kick it back up, three like a dog. Knee comes into twist and touch your left arm, holding it there. Three, two, one. Kick it back up. Step the right foot forward, one by one. Hands together in prayer, interlace your fingers, press your palms forward. Inhale, lengthen the front leg, reach up. Bend the front knee, reach forward and twist. So it's one smooth movement. 
Inhale, square center, lengthen, reach up. Bend knees, reach forward and twist. Square center, lengthen, reach up. Bend, reach forward and twist. Stay twisting here. Take the right hand behind you. Lean your torso forward and hook the left arm to the outer right knee and twisting. Actively crush the elbow to the outer right knee. Actively draw the right shoulder back, deepening that twist. Inhale, take it all the way back up. Warrior two, reverse warrior, right arm up and back, support with the left hand to the left leg. Exhale, side angle, right arm to top of the right leg to modify if it's difficult to take it any lower, but if you can take the right hand all the way down, take it there for the full expression of the pose, and then left arm reaching up. Extended side angle, left palm to face down and reach forward. So whether your elbow is to the top of the knee or the right hand down, it is still the same. Extended side angle. Half bind, left arm up and behind you. Lean up the torso back as you stand your shoulders. Keep the half bind, inhale, come up. Reverse warrior. Keep the half bind, lengthen out the right leg, half bound triangle. So you can always take the right hand to top of the shins to be less flexible. If you have a little more of you, you can always slide the right hand down, and then if you want the full expression of the pose, touch your right hand all the way down. Extend the triangle, raise left arm up, left palm to face down, and reach forward. Take it all the way back up. Reverse triangle, right arm up and back. Then bend the front knee, hands to the floor, right foot stepping back, plank. Inhale and breath. Exhale, push up, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Come forward into your plank, lower all the way down. Again, walk your hands wider off your mat, slightly forward. But this time, you're going to turn the fingertips out about 45 degrees before you come to your fingertips. All right, so lift the elbows up, engage your upper back, press into your fingers, come up, baby cobra, belly and ribs stay on the floor. Lift the elbows up, engage your upper back, rise up a little higher. This time, your elbows, I'm uh, sorry, your ribs and your, low, uh, your belly are off the floor. Lift the elbows up, engage your upper back, lengthen, and go to your highest extension to hold. And begin to release all the way down, walk your hands back in, child's pose. Lift the back of the head. Walk your hands in about one hand press. Okay, so your, your torso is now a little bit elevated. Keep your left hand to the floor. Raise your right arm up. Thread the right arm underneath when you're still hovering. Inhale, raise your right arm up. Thread underneath. Raise your right arm up and thread. Stay here suspended and reaching. Then touch the fingernails to the floor, so top of the hand, and then keep reaching your right hand out. So keep reaching um, and pressing the, tone, uh, the fingernails to the floor, right? And that gives you resistance to keep tracking forward. But by keeping the right arm off the floor, you have more freedom to find that extension of the arm. Right, so this also gives the opportunity for those of you who are not as mobile, right, to stay off the floor with your shoulders and your cheeks, but you can still get the extension. Right? Oftentimes, we take the cheek and the shoulder bubble into the floor, right, and also we're slightly lifted. You know, some of you may not have the, the, the flexibility for that, and it's difficult to do that, right? So this is like a modified version of that. One more breath. And press into your left hand, make your way back up. So make sure you keep that left hand there so that you know where to place your right hand. All right, so keep the right hand down, 
Bend your left elbow, lift. Exhale, twist. Stay suspended. Inhale, bend the elbows and lift. Exhale, twist. So this is for your thoracic spine. Inhale, lift. Exhale, twist. Stay suspended. Then touch your fingernails to the floor. Maybe even part of the fingers or the knuckles of the hand, right? And keep reaching to your right side so you're getting a deeper left side extension. And you the left shoulder, left cheek stays off the floor. You're resisting your left hand down the top of the head and keep crawling the left fingertips to the right side. So you're going into a twist. Right? And you may start to get tired, right? And at that point, you can release the entire top of the left hand to the floor, and that will feel a little bit more stable for you to keep reaching. Two more breaths. Press into your right hand. Take it back, walk it to down dog, <clears throat> and lift the knee. <clears throat> Inhale, left heel up, three legged dog. Exhale, left knee in toward the nose, shoulders of your wrists, high on your right tiptoes. Round the wrist of the back, knee in toward the nose, chin toward the chest, and stay here for another three. Two, and one. Kick your left heel up, open up the hips, bend the left knee. So you're stacking your left side over your right. Your left knee is reaching toward the sky, your right heel is reaching down toward the floor. Press firmly, particularly into your left hand for resistance, so that you can stack more actively. Raise your left leg back up, left knee to outside the left arm, one leg like crow, holding it here for three, two, and one. Kick your back up. Knee comes in to twist, touch your right arm and stay there. Three, two, and one. Kick it up. Step the left foot forward, warrior one. Ground the back heel down, arms up high. Hands together in prayer, interlace fingers, take the opposite thumb on top and press your palms forward. Inhale, leg to front leg, reach up. Bend the front knee, reach forward and twist. One movement. Inhale, lengthen, reach forward and up. Bend front knee, press forward and twist. One more time. Lengthen, press forward, reach up. Bend front knee, press forward and twist your left. Stay here. Then take your left arm to the uh, lower back. Reach forward, right arm to our left leg and twist. On the inhale, derotate, come all the way back up into warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, side angle. You can modify elbow to top leg or the left hand all the way down and raise right arm up. Side angle. Right palm to face down, reach forward, extended side angle. Right arm up and behind you, half plank. Lean back, stack your shoulders. Keep the half plank, come up. Reverse warrior. Lengthen on the left leg, half palm triangle. Left hand can stay on top of the shins, or you can lower just a little bit, or left hand all the way down and stack. Extend it, right palm facing down and reach forward. Inhale, take it all the way back up. Reverse triangle. Bend front knee, hands to the floor. Left foot stepping back plank, inhale breath. Exhale, charana. Inhale, dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, right heel up, open up the hips, bend the right knee, and flip the dog. 
You're going to take the right hand, arc it over to the right side and start to draw the seat toward the right heel and reach your right hand back in space. Inhale, lift up and reach your right arm overhead. Exhale, draw back. Inhale, draw forward. Exhale, draw back. Inhale, draw forward and step. You can stay here, the foot dog, or pick up the right knee. Right hand to right knee, or you'll get toe lock if you want to extend. Start to release, right hand comes back down, raise your right leg up. Thread the right arm to the left side of the fallen triangle. Raise your left arm straight up. On the exhale, let the seat draw down as you reach your left hand down. Inhale, lift up to open. Exhale, take it down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, take it down. Inhale, lift. Stay here or pick up the right foot with your left hand or suspend it. Flip the back round, right leg up, three leg up. Step the right foot forward, left knee comes down, press it, move, lunging forward. If you need extra padding to your left knee, you can take your blanket or your towels and pad your left knee. Right? If you don't need that, stay directly to the floor. Alright, lunging forward. Set up your hips, moving forward for the extension of the quads. Right knee over the right heel. Make sure the right heel stays grounded. As you lean the hips forward, press your hands to your thighs to lean up the torso back. Once you set up the back bend, now you're ready to take the arms up and reach back in Venus Mudra. Alright, so we're staying here for another eight breaths or so. You have many options here. You can side bend to the right. You can side bend to your left. You can start binding. Left hand to left foot, right arm up, mermaid one. You can take mermaid two. If you have other variations you'd like to take, go ahead and work through your variations. I'm going to work on frog today. Right, for maybe a little bit more of a simple uh, or simpler stretch uh, to the top of the left leg. Right hand to right thigh, support with the left hand, and just pick up the left knee. Once you have the left knee up, keep the left knee up and you're leaning forward with your hips. And that's a very nice stretch into your quads. Right, and as you sink into your right leg as well, it's an, an additional um, a hip opener as well. All right, let's start to break. Hands to the side of the right foot. Tuck the back toes. Lift the back knee. Lengthen over the right leg. Now, if your feet are too wide, right, you can always walk the back foot in a little bit. So that you can nice and, uh, be nice and stable within your practice. Hands to your side, really lengthen, exhale, fold deeper. Take the gaze slightly forward, bend your right knee, walk your hands forward and press your left knee to uh, the inside of the right knee and bend your left knee. Alright, if you can balance, take the balance, reach up with your fingers. And start to stand up on the right leg for tree pose. Open up the knee to the left side. Swivel the left foot in the right leg. 
Standing tall when you're steady. Take the arms up and out. Gaze slightly ahead of you to the floor. Check in with your balance. Once you are steady, you may stay here or work through your variations of choice. You can again wrap your hands right behind you for the heart opener. You can side bend to the left. If you have any additional variations, feel free to explore. All right, square back to center to your tree, left knee forward, step the left knee down chair, exhale back forward, crow pose, hands forward, about a foot and a half from your toes, and your hands are shoulders width, fingers wide spread, either your middle fingers or index fingers point forward, then bend the arms back so that you can meet the knees to the back of the arms. Then gaze slightly forward. Notice that elbows are drawn back. The objective now is to ground your palms and then lean forward with bent elbows. And your elbows start to line up over your wrists. When that happens, you're shifting way far enough forward and your toes might be light enough to just gently lift away from the floor. Gaze is to the floor. Right? It's, uh, underneath your head, not behind you. All right, when you're ready, walk or jump back. Chaturanga, up dog, down dog. Lower the knees down, walk your hands back in. Eagle arms, wrap the right arm underneath the left. So, in your eagle arms, you're lining up your elbows, then bending the elbows, pressing the top of the arms to, toward each other. If this is good enough and your shoulders are tight, stay here. If you can double wrap, this is the full expression of the eagle. Arms. Lift the elbows up. Exhale. Round just the mid and upper spine. So your elbows toward the ribs and reach the fingertips forward. Three times. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round. Come back to a vertical line. Twist to the right. Back center, twist to your left. Back to center, release your hands. Reach your arms out and up. Exhale, hands forward, down and up. Inhale, left hip up. Open up the hips, bend the left knee and flip the dog. Right, so we're taking um, what do we call this? Like an accordion um, flip dog, right? So left arm reaching out to the left side as you bend your left knee, draw the seat toward the heels, reach your left arm back. Inhale, lift it all up, and then reach your left arm forward again. Exhale, take the seat down, arc your left hand. Inhale, lift it all the way back. Exhale, draw the seat down, reach back. Inhale, lift. Stay here, this is the dog, or pick up the left knee. Left hand to the left knee, or you'll get toe up and extend. Release, flip back, left hand down, left leg up. Thread the left arm, left leg underneath to take fallen triangle. Reach your right arm over. Then take the right arm straight up, so up and down. Draw the seat toward the floor as you reach your right hand down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, draw down, reach your right hand down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, draw it down. Inhale, lift again. You can stay here, fall in triangle. Or pick up the left foot with your right hand and extend it out. Or suspend it and raise your right arm up. 
Slip it back. Left leg up, three leg like dog. Step the left foot forward. Right knee comes down, press it, move. So again, take right, uh, the right knee to pad it if you need it. Otherwise, hands to cover the thighs. Lunge forward. Make sure left knee lines up with the heel, uh, relatively vertical, and make sure the left heel stays grounded. That is part of your support structure. Lean forward. Then press into your hands and lean the upper torso back. Once you have that nice back bend, arms up, Venus, low drop. So again, you have plenty of time here. Either stay here in basic or start working on your variations. Side bending to the left. Side bending to the right. You can wrap the hands back behind you for part opener. Or start working on your binds into your mermaids. Mermaid one, grabbing the outside of the right foot, left arm up. Mermaid two, inside the foot, slip that right foot to your right elbow crease, and taking the bind. If you have other options, take it. All right, so today I'm working on frog. And then additionally, I took a stretch to your left leg, so left, sorry, to the right leg. So left hand to your left thigh, right hand to full support, point the right toes back, and lift that knee. Once you have that, lean the hips forwards and down to get more extension to the outer right, uh, to the top of the right leg. So you want to traction the hips forward. And as you deepen and sink into your left leg, you get some hip opening there as well. But it's a very nice deep right quad stretch right front of the hip extension. All right, starting to break. Hands come to either side of the left foot. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, and lengthen into your pyramid, and, uh, into your left hamstring stretch. If your right foot is too far back and you're not very stable, sliding in toward a split, then walk the right foot in. Make sure that you have a nice stable position here. In a lengthen, and exhale, fall a little bit deeper. Then take the gaze to the floor. Um, shift the way, uh, walk your hands forward, shift the weight to your left leg, bend your right knee, and line up the knees toward each other. And then shift the weight onto your left leg, raise your arms up for a balance. And then slowly stand up into tree pose. Sole the right foot and your left leg above and below the knee joint. Hands together in prayer. Take the arms up and out. You can remain here or take any additional variations you took on the first side. Hands come back behind you for the heart opener. Side bending to the right. I ended up taking a, a, take any additional variations you want. I ended up taking um, preparation for dragonfly, so I'm twisting your ankles to knee, taking the right tricep to soak the right foot, really anchor it in. So you want that tricep to be firmly pressing against your right foot. Took the half half bind, and then resting the head to the hand, and twisting here. And so it's not really a rest, is it? It's kind of like holding the head in that position so that I'm stabilized to twist deeper. All right, let's begin to make the way back up to tree and then breaking, step the right foot down, chair, and then dive forward, crow pose. And again, hands come forward about a foot and a half. So if you have your crow, go ahead and take it. 
for those of us who are still just working on the beginning structure, right? So what's important is, you do not want your hands to be too close. When your hands and your feet are too close and you set up this pose, if you're not already taking the feet off the floor easily, this is going to make it even worse, make it more difficult. Because your elbows are already lined up over your wrist, you can't go any further. If you go any further forward, it's a face plant, you're going to fall, right? So this doesn't give you a proper structure. If you take the hands forward by about a foot and a half, and of course, if you're quite tall, right, you might have to go wider because your hand, and your arms and your knees are going to need that extra length, right? So the rest of us, it's about average, right? About um, a foot and a half forward. Right? Then you're going to lift the seat, but you still want to stay on tiptoes. Bend the arms back so that you can take the knees to the back of the arms. Right? You can take it to the sides of the arms too. I prefer back of the arms. Now, once you plant the knees to the back of the arms, elbows lean forward to line up over your wrists as your entire body shifts forward. And gazes to the floor. When your toes get light enough, they start to come off the floor. Right, so there has to be a little bit of space for you to lean forward into, right? This transfer of weight from the back toward the front, much more successful if you start out with a little bit of space between your hands and your feet, right? If your hands are too close, right, you get stuck, you have nowhere to go. If your hands, in contrast, too far, you can't reach your knees to back the arms, right? So, that foot and a half for most of us is pretty good. If you're quite tall with very long limbs, you can manage a little bit more space. All right, let's start to make your way back. Walk or jump back. Charanga. Up dog. Down dog. Let's take a very quick pigeon in. Left leg up. Draw the left knee in. Land that shin to the floor. Walk your hands back. Make sure left side angles up to the side, 30 to 45 degrees. Walk your hands back, elongate through the spine. Make sure your pelvis is level, your spine is relatively straight. If you're uh, balanced here, then you have the proper setup. Make your way forward, forearms down. So we're not holding this for too long today. So um, I'll give you about five breaths perhaps today. Skip the variations, but just stay here and sink into your hips. Start to break. Lift the elbows up. Walk your hands back in. Tuck the back toes and press into your hands. Lift the left uh, shin off the floor and step it right back to the down dog. All right, come back to stillness. Second side. Raise your right leg up. Draw the right knee in. You're in a pointed right toe position. Line the shin to the floor. So already, the right thigh should be angling out to the side, that's what you're aiming for. Then, with your hand supporting, inch your left knee from the back so you can lower your seat some more, and untuck your toes. Then walk your hands back and you're sitting tall. Right? You want your pelvis to be level and the spine to be long. And the pelvis level, it helps with the balance if you angle up that right knee to the right side. All right, make your way forward once you've measured out. And we're just going to stay here and sink into this hip over there. And so I just quietly just settle into the pose. Perhaps if you're facing all the way down, your eyes are closed. Now start to use your mind's eye to look for those spots that you feel a little bit of sensation or a little bit, a, a lot of sensation and you're kind of like getting to the point where it's feeling a little bit deep, right? 
So breathe into that spot. Use your mind to add zero in on it and then bring oxygen and energy into that spot and see if maybe you can release some of that with like a very um, specific intention toward that spot. And so whether we imagine it or not, sometimes if you just close your eyes and concentrate on a certain sensation, maybe you think about the, the, the sensation of your fingertips, right? You close your eyes, right? You can really direct that energy toward, like, I don't know, a middle finger or something, and then um, direct energy into that spot. So feel for whatever tightness you're experiencing and breathe into that spot to release it. Alrighty, let's break. Walk it back in. Tuck the back toes and press it up into your down dog and walk it out side to side. Alright, when you're ready, walk your feet forward toward your hand and take the seat down. Extend the legs forward. Now, with the help of your hands, as you decide, you slide the hands out as you lower onto your back. So that sliding the hands out gives you an assist to carry the weight of your torso to lean back. All right, left arm onto your side, left knee comes in for the spinal twist, twist to the right. So you're rolling to the outer right hip, outer right leg. Take back center, switch legs, switch arms, and twist to left. And Take back center again, hugging both knees in. Step the feet to the floor, slide the legs forward, keep the feet slightly separated, toes turned out. Arms alongside the body, palms face up. Let your eyes close, settle into your shavasana, find a relaxation. Begin to reconnect to your breath and start to move the fingers and the toes. Reach the arms overhead, stretching in opposite directions, and then rolling over to the right side and come up to a comfortable cross-legged position. Reconnect into an even seat, a lengthy spine, shoulders broad, breath deep, and let the neck be free. Inhale for all.
Namaste, everybody. Thank you so much for being here and uh, practicing with me today. Um, please visit my website at simhayoga.com for the full streaming schedule, as well as my payment info information for Venmo and for PayPal. My preferred way of payment is through Venmo, and my handle is Simha Yoga Lab. My four-digit ID code is 8096 if you need it, um, if you're prompted for it on Venmo. Um, classes are $10. If you're having a difficult time right now, $5 is fine. Please do the best you can and we'll help to support each other. Um, if you see anything on Instagram or Facebook, please repost. Let people know through word of mouth and just um, share the word. I really appreciate that. Thank you again. Have a great day. See you soon and stay safe, everybody.